Hi guys, welcome back to Cisco Nate, and today I'm going to show you guys how to install an FMCV in AWS. So we're going to start like I always do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, log in here so you guys can see every single step along the way. AWS Go ahead and log into my account. Typically open up a VPC and an EC2 window to make this easy. Now I already have some stuff fired up, so I'm still going to go through all of the steps as usual. Launch VPC. I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, Cisco Nate FMCV. I'm going to choose a different CIDR subnet, 10100. Oh no, 10100 for the big CIDR. And then 10110 for the private slash 24. And this is the subnet that will be assigned to the management interface. So I'm going to call this uh, FMCV and GMT. All right. At this point, I'm going to click OK. <clears throat> and we can see that the initial uh, VPC has been created with the CIDR blocks and everything. So as usual, I'm going to try to pre-configure everything. Now, if you think about uh, an FMCV, there's actually not a whole lot to it in terms of the physical connectivity. There's going to be one virtual port connecting to one port on the FMCV. But there are quite a few additional complexities for the security groups that you want to configure because of the multifaceted nature of the FMC. If you want to be able to SNMP query it, SSH to it, web into it, have it manage other devices, the security groups uh, are going to have to be vastly different than typical for these devices. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about the ports that we need. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to uh, FMC V. Uh, configuration guide is what you need and I'm going to go ahead and look at the general configuration guides I'm going to six six five I think that's the current one and then all the way at the bottom under events and assets is the communication ports and this is what you're going to need so that you can easily configure your accesses correctly now this jumbles together FMC FTD and a bunch of other stuff so what I'm going to do is I want to grab this entire chart here to make it easier and I'm going to take that and throw it into Excel, which is already running. That's great. Let's delete this. I'm going to show you guys from the ground up what this looks like. Let me start a new file. I'm going to paste this in here. Drag these columns over a little bit so everything's a little easier to read. And this is probably what you're going to have to do too. And the reason I'm not going to host a static port mapping is because the ports change. So I feel it's better to teach you guys how to feed yourselves uh, so that when the time comes, uh, you're able to do it with the most up-to-date information possible. All right, so what I'm going to do is select the top row here. I'm going to go to Data, Filter, the Direction. Uh, so in general, when you look at the security groups on AWS, the outbound direction already allows anything, any, any. Right? It's the inbound direction where we restrict control. So we're going to do inbound and inbound outbound on the direction filter. And then because we're only working with FMC and FTD, we're going to choose any device and FMC. So this should limit it to just a few ports. And yeah, I say just a few jokingly here. The two primary ones you really need to worry about are SSH and web, 443. As you can see, some of these are replicated here a few times because they're used for multiple services. But in general, you need 22 and 443, and then whatever else you happen to be using. If you want access to the database from an external client, then you need to allow 1500 TCP in. But this is the fastest, easiest way to get an idea of what ports you're going to need. So now that I've got that, I can come back to my AWS instance and go back to my VPC console. I know my single subnet I need for the management subnet. It's already created here. That will connect to my FMC's management interface. It's connected to a route table that knows how to get everywhere um, as well as locally to the 10100 subnet. And the network ACL that it is connected to also allows all the traffic. So that's good. Now the only thing we need to look at is the physical interfaces that are already associated with this instance. And there isn't any because it's a VPC. Now I need to launch my instance. And this will create the interface and a default security group. So I'm going to come here, I'm going to say FMCV, bring your own license, that's great. Let's select that. I'm going to go ahead with the largest one in hopes that it'll just spin up a little faster. So that should be the C42X large. 
It looks like the C3s are deprecated even though the splash screen still shows a C4. So we're going to go ahead and select the C4 2x large here. Configure instance details. There's my FMCV. There's my subnet. SE reservation, CPU options. This is great. Now, there is a little bit of a zero day uh, user data config. Very tiny. It just dictates the host name and the username. Uh, and password to log in. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Uh, that is actually also going to be uh, provided for you on my Google Drive as I normally link to in my videos. I'll grab this, throw it in here, I'll click add storage. Now 250 gigabytes is the best uh, to start with. You don't want to go any lower. It has to be 250 at a minimum. It is 250. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that and just review and launch because that's enough to do the minimum uh, stuff that I want to do on this video for you guys. So go ahead and hit launch. I want to create a new existing uh, new key pair, FMC V, download the key pair, launch instance. And then we're going to go through the same exercise we typically do with putty gen. And launch putty gen. I want to hit load. I'm going to grab the key that we just generated. FMCV PEM. I'm going to hit type in a passphrase here. Save the private key. Name it also FMCV. Hit save. At this point, my instance is going to be starting up. <coughs> If I'm lucky, I'm able to see some IP information about it right now, but no, unfortunately, it has not launched yet. I do see the private IP is here. That's good. Now, while it's in the middle of the throes of starting itself up, I can go ahead and start checking what it's auto configured. You can see there's a new interface that was generated for the FMC. So I'm going to type FMC V MGMT. This is perfect. And along with that network interface, there should be a security group, which is here. Um, so I'm going to go look at that security group that it's already created for the management interface. That's this one here. And this is where the inbound rules are important. Now, it looks like they have a good default template. They allow uh, web traffic and SSH. That's good enough for now. I'm not going to worry about adding these additional ports that I showed you earlier. Now, we could add SNMP. We could add... Uh, management traffic for database and host client, but we don't need to worry about that now. I just wanted to show you guys how to do that. So right here on this security group attached to the management interface is where you would want to do that. While we're waiting for it to fire up, I'll go ahead and allocate yet another elastic IP. <coughs> and then I'm going to choose to associate that with my F and the FMCV. So I'm going to attach it to the FMCV management 10.1.1.1.2.3. And that will allow me to reach this instance once it is up and fully operational. So at this point, uh, I'm going to have to wait a little bit as the FMCV fires up. So while it's doing that, I'm going to then uh, pan out. All right, guys, so we're back and the FMCV is now running in AWS. That is it. You now have a successfully running FMCV. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to my putty. And we'll try to connect to it. <clears throat> now we have to configure the putty with the key that we had before. So I'm going to run putty config. I'm going to give it the IP, the public IP that has been associated with this instance. The public IP is listed here under the instance tab. Whoop, I don't know what happened there. All right, here we go. Ooh, let's copy that to clipboard. Come back here. Call it FMCV. Going to go load our SSH auth key that we generated earlier. And there we go. We are now logged in SSH. Wants us to change the password. Password provider didn't meet the strong password criteria. Oh, they have some strong password. All right. There we go. All right, you know what? I'll just make it this one. A 
Okay, cool. So uh, I've now logged in, and now the last thing would be is to test our web access. Remember, we set up the security groups to allow HTTPS. So let's see if that also works. Go ahead and open the browser. All right, we got a response. This is fantastic. Click through, and there it is. And I should be able to log in with the password and username I just set. <coughs> So there we have it, this is amazing. Uh, within a few minutes, we had a FMCV deployed and up and running. I'm just gonna go ahead and disable this. Uh, enable email. Anyways, I'm just gonna do a 90 day eval, click save, and we are now running and able to start registering Firepower Threat Defense devices to this Firepower Management Center. So that's it for me today. I just wanna show you guys how to get this up and running pretty quick. Have a good one.